What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Megan, show up fitness instructor. And today I'm going to go over chapter 16, core training concepts, tell you what you need to know, what you don't need to read in order to pass the NASM CPT. Now, for those of you that are tuning in for your first time, I am our in-person instructor here in La Jolla, California, as well as our online instructor of past NASM, ACE, and any other textbook CBT course. Thanks to the help of our study guide and weekly Zoom calls, we've been able to help over 3,200 people pass this thing, and we can help you too. Now, although we do have these resources to help you guys pass it, we do not recommend actually doing these. Now, the reason why we have these resources is because we know that you may be going to a gym that only accepts specific CBTs, or it may be too late to get that refund. Now, you may be wondering, why do we still help you guys pass it? We help you pass it so you can stop spending six months a year reading this textbook and still at the end of taking the test, not know what to do. So we're here to help you pass this thing as fast as possible. And then more importantly, get onto continuing your learning on how to actually train people, which is why we have our own SUF CPT money back guarantee that if you feel like you learned more reading a textbook than you did through our online or in-person internship course, we'll give you your money back. During our course, we're gonna help you guys learn anatomy, programming, business, sales, assessment, nutrition, everything, literally everything that it takes to make this a long lasting and successful career. Now, of course, you guys are watching this because you need to pass NASM, so let's get to it. Page 513 talks about the different types of core training that you can do. We have stability, endurance, strength, and power. Uh, key things that we're looking at, it's gonna be stability, strength, and power, right? It goes along the same levels of the OBT model. Level one, stabilization, level two, strength, and level three, power. So these are where you're going to place the core exercises for your different clients. So level one, stabilization, this is the stabilization core exercise that I would do, and so forth with strength and power. All right, page 514, we have local versus global muscles. Now, a lot of you guys get caught up on this concept. You really don't need to worry about it. Maybe you see one question, maybe you don't. But just because people keep on asking, I will explain the difference. So local muscles, I think it's gonna be deep to your core, along your vertebrae, your spine, right? Uh, when I think of comparisons, I think of like supermarkets. So local mom and pop shop, it's gonna be a local muscle deep to the core, usually type one muscle fibers, which are gonna be slow, uh, slow twitch muscles, smaller, uh, slower to fatigue. These ones are deep to the core. They're gonna help stabilize the spine during movements. Versus global, think for a supermarket, think like Walmart, Costco, on the outskirts, it's everywhere, right? It's on the outside. So global, it's gonna be on the outside. Think it's something that you could palpate, that you can feel. When you go through these next pages, you'll see the many different types of local versus global muscles. Just know that the main key ones that you might see is gonna be multifidious and you'll have your TVA, transverse abdominis. Those would be local muscles deep to the core, help stabilizing your spine. And then when you keep on turning, you'll get to the global muscles. Once again, a lot of them, but the key ones that they usually look at, it's gonna be your rectus abdominis. That's gonna be the most superficial abdominal muscle that you have in the front. You'll also have your rectus spinae on the back. They really like that one. And of course your latissimus dorsi. So those are all local versus global muscles, once again, don't get caught up on this concept. So we'll keep on going here. Page 520, uh, just for you guys to know, anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt. Anterior referring to the front side, posterior referring to the back side. So when I look at my hips, if it goes forward, my butt sticking out, that's me an anterior tilt. When it goes backwards, you know, I wanna squeeze my glutes, tilt when I'm doing like a hip threat, when I'm doing like a glute bridge and things like that. That's going to be a poster tilt, just for you guys to know there. Drawing in maneuver, bracing, you can possibly see, maybe, maybe not. The drawing in maneuver, you're going to see that you're trying to recruit those local muscles closer to the spine to bring your belly button towards it. Versus bracing, it's going to be more towards contracting those global muscles on the outside, help you bracing for heavier lifts and loads, help protect that spine. Don't really see you guys getting questions on that, but maybe you know. 526, definitely know this. the general things of progressions, regressions. People get caught up on this concept a lot. This is what you're gonna see throughout it. So for planes of motions, we got sagittal, flexion, extension, frontal, abduction, adduction, and transverse, any rotation. Speed, obviously slow, medium, fast, explosive. Volume, uh, going from sets or repetitions going to be from low, moderate, or high. And the progressions that I'm really looking at here that we'll see in these core movement patterns is going to be 
little to no movement of the spine, which would be stabilization. And we progress to the strength where you're going to have controlled movement of the spine, such as flexion, extension, rotation. And then lastly, power is that's where you're going to see explosive, trying to produce as much force as possible. So the different exercises fall in these progressions. Pretty much no movement, movement as powerful, explosive as possible there. When you get to page 528 and so forth, you're going to see different types of core ab exercises that you could do for your clients, where you would put them stabilization, strength, power, the different phases there. So they have a lot of different examples. I'm going to show you guys. I demonstrated earlier just the top of each level. So when we go to stabilization, we're going to see marching. So marching, you're pretty much just lying on your back here, making sure that's completely on the ground flat, squeezing that core. You're going to lift one leg up about 90 degrees with that flexion and then bring it back down and with the other one and so forth. Once again, your spine is not moving during this exercise. Then you have the floor bridge. This is pretty common exercise that people know how to do, but just so you guys can see, once again, this is what a floor bridge is. Very little movement of the spine, really trying to focus on you doing that posterior pelvic tilt that we talked about earlier. So then we'll keep on going. And the next one for stabilization is going to be a plank on page 533. Sometimes they refer to this one as an iso floor prone exercise. Remember the difference between pronated knuckles facing me for supinated palms facing forward. So iso standing for isometric ab exercise, a plank. Uh, so when you're doing this, pretty much everyone's done that before. You could also do a side plank, just go to your side. But once again, your spine is not moving during this exercise. And then the last one you'll see here, still on page 533, is going to be a dead bug. This one, just like all the other ones, your spine is not moving. Want to make sure that you're driving your back into the ground, have controlled movement with your clients, opposite leg, opposite arm, going back and forth there. So then we move on to the next page. Obviously, there's different ones, but those are the key ones. Page 535, you'll see when we get into the strength ones. You have movement of the spine here, ball crunch here, and maybe a cue that you could see is make sure that your client touches their chin, that they're not overextending it. That's gonna be tucked in. So when they're performing that crunch, there's no extra stress on their spine. Move on to the next page, page 536. Now we have a reverse crunch. So just like the crunch, just the opposite. Instead of my top portion going forward, now my back portion's going up. So I'll be on the bench. You could also probably just do it on the ground as well, but you're gonna raise your hips up above, bring them back down. And you wanna make sure while you're performing this that you're not using your legs to do the movement. It should be coming from your core. So try to refrain from just swinging crazily and have controlled movements during this. And then on page 537, a key one here, cable rotation, as you can see here. With this cable rotation, there's a key thing that you might see. What is occurring to that back leg? So when we refer to back leg, we're referring to backside mechanics. Three parts of backside mechanics is triple extension. My hip is extended, my knee is extended, and my ankle is extended, which is called plantar flexion there. Make sure that you guys know what triple extension looks like, and you're going to use it during this cable rotation here. Page 538, still going to be using the cable machine here for a cable chop. Now we're just grabbing it from a higher stance and bringing it down below. Now instead of having that triple section in the back leg, now it's going to be flexed there. Now we're into the power, the core power exercises. Once again, trying to do these movements as fast as possible, explosive, powerful. Anytime you see these things, you're usually going to use a medicine ball. Page 538, medicine ball, rotation, chest pass. This one you'd usually throw to a partner or against a wall, making sure once again that this exercise is for clients that are in that power phase, not doing it for a beginning client there. Ball, pull, over, throw. A lot of words there. Basically, you're just on that stability ball and you're in that bridge position, throwing the ball over to a partner. Um, I do not have a partner in this video, so I'll just replay it, but you guys get the concept of just trying to throw it overhead there. Page 540, the next one we're going to see is a medicine ball soccer throw. This one that they really like, so make sure you know this one as a core power exercise. Basically, you're having that medicine ball above your head and you're throwing it down to the ground. You want to make sure that you get a ball that does not bounce back up easily. Make sure you grab the proper medicine ball there. All right, so that was the end of chapter 16, core training concepts. 
everything that you need to know in order to pass an ASM CPT. Now, you're not going to see a lot of these specific questions on the test, but the basic concept, once again, of regressions and progressions, and you're definitely going to see a couple of them on there, so make sure that you know them. But of course, if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to my channel, and watch the previous videos I have on the main concepts that you definitely need to know. Overactive muscles, OPT models, stages of change, basic nutrition and health, key terms, you guys need to make sure you know these before we move on to this, because if you don't know that, you're most likely going to fail the test. Now, once again, like I said, these resources that we have, these YouTubes, our study guide, weekly Zoom calls, as well as our extra quiz questions, tutoring one-on-one -on -one sessions, they're all to help you pass this thing as fast as possible. In fact, we've moved it from two classes a week to now five classes a week. So if you're part of our NASM Elite tier, you're going to get five calls a week, Monday to Friday, going over the concepts from our study guide to pass NASM as fast as possible. Once again, we want you to pass it as quick as possible. Don't take months, years trying to do this. Let's get it under 30 days. Let's get it in a week. We've had people pass it in three days. Get the information, pass the test, then forget about it. The biggest feedback that we get from people that pass the test is that they still don't know how to program and they don't feel confident training people. And that's why here at Show Up Fitness, we're gonna provide you guys all the tools necessary during our internship course so you do feel confident training people. Once again, we have our in-person internship here in La Jolla, California, as well as West Hollywood. If you're interested, make sure to comment below, message me on Instagram at activeact7be, as well as at Show Up Fitness, Show Up Fitness Internship. You can also message me at my email, megan at showupfitness.com. And of course, if you cannot commit to the in-person, we do have online daily calls, Monday and Friday, that are live and recorded, so you still gain all the information that you need to know to make this a successful career. And if you're going for online, you can use my code megan25, you get a discount on that first month. Now, if you cannot come to us, don't worry, we will come to you. We have weekend seminars occurring every month or so. So be on the lookout for the next dates that we have for those coming up. And of course, as you guys all know, if you wanna be a great successful personal trainer, all you gotta do is show up. It's a girl, Megan, out of here.